What's up, YouTube? Will Gibbons here, back at you with another tutorial. Now, if you've ever struggled to match the appearance of a real-world material in your 3D application, then this tutorial might be for you. Whether you're trying to match a fabric, a wood, a metal, a plastic, a paint, or even a leather, then material scanning could be the way to go. Now, even though most 3D rendering applications have really nice procedural material editors, such as Keyshot's Material Graph, they're not always going to be able to recreate everything. And in that case, it's a great idea to use scanned assets. So today I'm gonna to show you how this works using Keyshot, as well as some scanned materials that you can download and try today. So without further ado, grab yourselves a cup of coffee and Join me in Keyshot. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be using scan 3D fabric materials inside of Keyshot, and we need a model to use them on. And I'm gonna use an old 3D model that I created for a previous tutorial in which we made this camo fabric here. If you want to get the model to follow along, head on over to willgibbons.com downloads, link below, and you can get your 3D model as well. Now we're also gonna be using something new called U3M, a unified 3D material. And this is a digital material. And the purpose of this is to standardize the way the material looks, regardless of which 3D application you're using it in. And what's cool is the latest version of Keyshot actually supports the U3M standard. And with the free samples they offer us on the website, I'm gonna walk you through how to actually use them within Keyshot. So go ahead and download each of these examples from the u3m.info website, and then I'll show you what to do with them next in Keyshot. So here we are in Keyshot, but we need a 3D model before we can apply any materials to it. So go ahead and grab that Material Graph Monday Week 4 cloth sim.fbx file that you would have gotten from the file vault and import that into Keyshot. Now, once your model's been imported to Keyshot, we have to do a couple of things. We wanna head on over to the Scene tab, go ahead and expand that model and find the cube, and we are going to delete the default cube. Next, select the cloth, and then under the Position tab, just click Snap to Ground, and it's on the ground. Before importing the U3M materials, I suggest you make a new folder. Mine is in Custom and then Tutorials. And to import the materials, we're going to go to our Tools up in the Keyshot ribbon and choose this option called Import Tool. From here, I'm actually going to choose Import All Materials in subfolders. And from here, I'm just gonna paste the destination of the folder I'm gonna search for here. And we see all these different material types that we downloaded from that website, the U3M website. Go ahead and just hit select folder. And it then asks where it should put those new materials. So I want them in my custom folder and then inside the tutorials folder and we'll hit okay and wait. And here inside our materials library, we now see with the thumbnail supplied all these new materials that have been imported into Keyshot. So now I'm eager to actually see how these work on our model. Well, let's simply grab one and drag it on. And at first it looks pretty good. It may be a bit small, uh, very small. I'm gonna zoom out a bit, but then resize it. So I'll double click on it. And when you do double click to edit this material, what you'll do is you'll see that it uh, is based off the generic material type shader. This is also fairly new to Keyshot and I haven't done many tutorials, uh, probably not any on it yet. Uh, I will in the future if you want, but this is basically using this generic shader uh, type, which is fairly standardized across various 3D applications. So you can make your changes here. Uh, one thing I'm seeing is that the mapping looks like it's incorrect. I'm seeing a weird seam here. Um, if I go into my material graph, actually, let's just do that. So inside our material graph, you can see that basically what Keyshot did is it created a Keyshot material out of these textures. It automatically kind of scaled them and plugged them into the right um, sockets within our generic uh, node. But what I'm seeing here is that it used a mapping type of box by default. And this 3D model has the correct UV mapping applied to it. So we need to actually change this to UV instead of box. And all of a sudden it gets really big. So we're gonna scale this guy down. I'm gonna hit the chain to link these two values, width and height, and then let's cut this down by half. So 50% scale. And you'll notice that if we double click on all these other nodes, or textures, you'll see that they all have become UV mapped and they're all the same scale. So that's looking pretty good. 
And overall, quite interesting. We've got this material that looks like a very comfortable pair of wool socks. I, I like it a lot. And uh, yeah, it looks it looks great, to be honest. Um, I haven't done anything with the lighting or anything fancy there. It just, it just basically works. And I think that's the whole purpose of this U3M material type is it's just meant to work with minimal amount of effort. And if we were to use it in another 3D application other than Keyshot, it should produce pretty much the same results. Again, I did have to update it to UV mapping. So let's see what else we have. We have this uh, houndstooth fabric. Again, it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna have to pop into the material graph and make sure it's set to UV and maybe cut it down by, let's say, point, say 0.25. This one to be a bit smaller. Looks like there's even some like odd hairs and stuff sticking out of this one that's kind of cool. Now these aren't physical geometry, it's just kind of like, but some kind of flyaway fibers, that's cool. I'll make it quite a bit smaller. And again, it looks quite nice. Okay, so let's check out some of these other materials. I've actually gone ahead and scaled and set them to UV mapping just to save some time here. And before we look at those, let's hit Control G to add a ground plane just to take care of those weird shadows we were seeing there. And why not just go ahead and set a little bit more of an interesting environment. Okay, so I've set the three panel straight for K and I'm going to set my brightness to 1.5, that should do. And then I'll hit C on the keyboard to add a solid white color background. And let's go ahead and check out some of these other materials. We have this big knit material, which is quite cool. Uh, the other reason I wanted to switch up our lighting environment was to actually take a look at some of the other material properties, like how reflective or shiny the material is. Uh, the other big thing we might not notice is that this still looks a little bit flat and strange. So let's take a look at its material graph. But there's another thing I noticed is in the downloads, we actually have a displace texture and the Keyshot U3M did not import the displace texture, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and try using this. If I right click and get a geometry node and go to displace, plug that into geometry, plug this texture into geometry or displace, double click on displace, and let's make the size small, 0.1 centimeter, that's gonna be one millimeter, I'll hit execute. And we may or may not see too much of a result from that. Let's go ahead and bump it up a bit. Let's try one centimeter. So now we get this kind of bumpy sort of look, but let's actually make sure that this is mapped correctly because if we preview it, I wanna make sure that it's actually doing what it needs to. So that it's set to UV, and the size is not, doesn't quite look like it's matching. So we had 0.5 for these other values. So let's go in here and set 0.5 for both of these values. And now it should be the correct size. And let's go ahead and hit refresh and see how this thing looks. There we go. So what we should be seeing is that, especially on these flat areas, we're starting to get some displacement. And of course, with any sort of displaced textures, you are going to need to make sure that you have a small enough triangle size. So we'll say 0 0.05 and enough triangles to make sure it looks good. And the other thing is that with this specific model, I think the edges are coming unstitched a little bit. I'm not sure how much we can do about that here. Kind of gets into some more displacement related stuff for a future tutorial maybe, we'll see. Now this isn't an entirely, like this isn't a tutorial on how to make these materials per se. I really wanted to explore this new material type, this U3M, and talk about scanned materials. So why wouldn't we just make this in Keyshot's material graph if here we are back in Keyshot's material graph? And the point is, this is too complex of a pattern and too complex of a material to actually create using Keyshot's procedural. So we rely on assets that have been photo scanned by a software that knows how to take pictures and then recreate all these textures from those pictures. So if we check out some of these others, just so you can see what we have, there's this kind of interesting kind of a mesh that it almost looks like a mesh that you would see on an office chair, which is quite cool. It's got this kind of opacity channel. Uh, we also have this glossy leather, which is a really, really nice looking material. Works quite a bit nicer than the built-in procedural leather in Keyshot. You got the roughness and everything there. That looks really nice. And we also have this awesome blue cotton squares material. I like this one a lot. This one has a lot of this nice little detail. And the last material we have here is this cool blue cotton squares. It's got this nice little uh, stitched detail. So other than these just being really cool and, and being a great way to get complex looking materials 
materials inside of Keyshot, things that are perhaps more organic or things that are cloth. Again, cloth is probably the number one use of this at this point in time. But how do we actually go about getting samples of our materials scanned and in inside Keyshot? All right, so just to summarize, Vizu is a company that creates hardware and software for digitizing materials. So it'll scan and create 3D digital materials that you can use in your 3D application. U3M is an open source material type to technology that companies like Vizu use to digitize material scans. And this can be used, again, these can be used in a lot of different softwares. And it just so happens that Keyshot with one of its later updates actually directly imports U3M material types, saving you a lot of time and hassle in the material graph. So anyway, just wanted to uh, clarify that. Hopefully this gives you some ideas. If you have some projects where you need some scanned materials, or if you work for a company that does a lot of textiles, maybe worth considering either one of those scanners or you know using their services to scan a material uh, whenever you need it. I have an upcoming course I'm working on in which fabric will be a part of what we'll be rendering. And I reached out to my buddy who actually works at Vizu and he was able to provide a scan for me for that course. So I thought it would be the right thing to do to create a video like this, sharing what they do and some of this technology and how it integrates so well within Keyshot. So hopefully you learned something today and uh, until next time guys, happy rendering.